4.2, and I have candy again. With some extra special things like Oreos and Pop Tarts. So, okay, so the first one is um, if, a mole press, if the pressure of air is 1 atm, what's the partial pressure of compound X? So, partial pressure of compound X. What is the equation that we use when we're trying to find partial pressures? Kyle. It's like the mole fraction, the ratio of mole fraction. Total number of moles. The mole fraction equals the ratio of pressure over total pressure. Okay, so mole fraction equals partial pressure over total pressure. Yeah. Okay, so I wrote it a little bit exactly the same way that you did. And then if you rearrange that, then if you rearrange it, you get the total pressure e or the partial pressure equals your mole fraction times your total pressure. So we're given our values, right? So this one's pretty easy, you just plug them in. So we know that it's 1 times 10 to the negative 4. Everyone knows what parts per million is, right? Yeah? Okay. So 1 times 10 to the negative 4, and then 1 atmosphere. So that gives you a partial pressure of 0 0.0001. So the next part is if the temperature of the air is 300 Kelvin, what is the temperature of compound X? Aaron? 300 Kelvin? Why? I mean, how did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> They're mixed together. So the same temperature. Right, so X is in the air, so X is the same temperature as the air. So we're told the air is at 300 Kelvin. We know that X is in air. 300 Kelvin. Yay, okay. So then we go to consider the phase diagram. So we have our phase diagram. Would someone like to talk me through where I label each of these regions. So what is this region down here? Yes, Eric. Gas. Gas. Vapor. Okay. What is this region here? Liquid. Yes. Liquid. Liquid. What is our region over here? Stool. Solid. Solid. Okay, so what is <laughs> what is this line here indicate? Joel. Vapor liquid equilibrium. Vapor liquid equilibrium? Or I mean boiling point. Or what is it? When it, it transferring from liquid to vapor, I don't know how you would mean it. <laughs> <laughs> so is this point here in equilibrium? Yes. Yeah, so this point here is in equilibrium. This point here is also in equilibrium, but it happens to have two different phases. That's what you're trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. So what's this line here? Uh, Sheridan. Solid, oh, and this one's solid liquid. And then what is the where they all meet? Triple, triple, triple point. point. Okay. Great. Triple point. So consider the phase diagram. Locate the point that corresponds to 100 mole, molar parts per million of X. So we know our temperature. We know our partial pressure, right? This is partial pressure. So pretty straight, pretty straightforward. You know your partial pressure, you know your temperature, so it is right there. All right, everyone go with that? Cool. Okay, so if the, con if the contaminated air is cooled at a constant pressure, at what temperature will the compound X start to condense? Who got through this? Someone different. Zach. Uh, um, I said 180. So how did you get to 182 degrees? I followed the line, the point left. Okay. So we know it's a constant pressure, right? So this is constant pressure. So if you're doing constant pressure, then that means you're just decreasing your temperature until you reach the point which it goes from being your vapor to your liquid. So that's exactly right. So to what temperature must one cool the air to reduce the contamination level to 10 parts per million. Okay, so we know that we have this and we cooled it down to here, right? But now we want 10 parts per million. So if you go down, that was our temperature from this, which is 182, so you're right. So if we're doing 10 parts per million, we need to determine what the partial pressure is going to be. Exactly the same as A. So same 
equation, plug it all in what you know, and that gives us point zero zero, yeah, one. So now we can find out where we were in the last equation. So we're going to take the point zero zero one and plug it in. So we're going to take point zero zero one and plug it in. So we're going to take point zero zero one and plug it in. So we're going to take point zero zero one and plug it in. So we're going to take point zero zero one and plug it in. So we're going to take point zero zero one and plug it in. So we're going to take point zero zero one and plug it in. So we're going to take point zero zero one and plug it in. So we're going to take point zero zero one and plug it in. So we're going to take point zero zero one and plug it in. So we're going to take point zero zero one and plug it in. So we're going to take point zero zero one and plug it in. So we're going to take point zero zero one and plug it in. So we're going to take point zero zero one and plug it in. So we're going to take point zero zero one and plug it in. So we're going to take point zero zero one and plug it in. So we're going to take point zero zero one and plug it in. So we're going to take point zero zero one and plug it in. So we're going to take point zero zero one and plug it in. So we're going to Condense down into being at the lower pressure. Does that make sense? Is anyone confused? No? We good? Nod our heads. Okay, cool. So we can find from here what temperature this is at, which is 162 Kelvin. So it's the exact same reading as you do on your normal diagrams. You find your point, you drop a line straight down, you can find your Kelvin. Um, and then to what temperature must one, okay, so that was, so what temperature must one cool the air? That was E. So now we're doing F, which is, if the air is compressed at a constant temperature, at what pressure will compound X start to condense? Okay, so we're back to our same old diagram, same point. Uh, where should I go from here? Caroline. Go vertically up. Why am I going vertically up? So I'm at constant temperature. Okay. So I'm at constant temperature, which means that I can just go straight vertical up. So as we go up, because we're at constant temperature, until we meet the line. So we're at 300 Kelvin. We're going to go straight up until we meet the line. And that's our new point. And so um, at what pressure will X start to condense? So we know the partial pressure. Um, which is 0.2 atm, but how do we find the total pressure? Somebody new. Charlie. Divide by the mole fraction. Divide by the mole fraction, okay. So, like you just said, you divide it by the mole fraction, which is 0 0.0001, and then you know your total pressure is 2,000 atms, which, you think about 2,000 atms, that's really, really pressurized. So our last part is G, which is, to what pressure must one compress the air to reduce the compound X level to 10 parts per million? So my thought was, I have this, I know I wanted to get down to this, um, you know, parts per million, so I'm just going to drop it down, there we're at, just divide it out, everyone good with this? Not our heads? No? No one's doing anything. Is this right? Yes or no? Aaron says no. Why is this wrong? Um, because all you've done is like reduce the pressure. You haven't actually removed any of the X. Okay. So, you're right. That's wrong. <laughs> and so, we know that in part F we compress the air to the point where where the compound X started to condense, right? So we went across. And then what happens if I keep increasing the pressure and then bring it, follow that line down? Remember our, if we just sort of follow this line down? Um, compound X will continue, continue to condense, which is what you said, you take the X out. Um, and then this will result in Y X decreasing. So now we come straight back into the equation that we've been using the entire time, which is that yx equals px over p total, right? So we know that p total is px over yx, 0.2 atmospheres, which we found from earlier, and then the same, the new concentration, and that's our new um, pressure. Okay, that's it.